Hi everyone, my name is Jie Huang from Department of Physics, Wenzhou University. Today, I'd like to share one of our recent works to you, a machine learning model to classify dynamic processes in liquid water. I'm going to talk about in this following parts. In the first part, I will give a brief introduction um, to why it is important to study the property of water. And in the second part, uh, I will show you how to represent hydrogen bound networks in liquid water. In the third part, I will show you different dynamic processes in liquid water from computer simulation. And in the fourth part, in order to find a specific um, dynamic processes, we build a RNN based classifier. And finally, in the last part, I will draw conclusions of our work. Water is essential to life on Earth. For example, it involves in transpiration process in all the plants on Earth. And it also has a lot of amazing properties, such as the density of water decreases as temperature decreases. So it allows stands, um, the ice floating on water, which makes it possible for the living creatures under the sea to live through the long cold winter. And under some conditions, the hot water is much more easily to get frozen compared to the um, cooler water. So this effect is called Mupemba effect, which is amazing as you can see from this picture. Water seems simple. However, that is not true. People are still arguing about what is the structure of water. And uh, this question uh, was also listed as one of the 125 big questions over the next quarter century in 2005 by Science Magazine. In this work, we focused on the dynamic property of liquid water. The first thing we did is that we simulated liquid water using AB initial molecular dynamic simulations for 60 picoseconds. Despite the fact that there are a lot of unique properties which, which are hard to understand, but uh, it's common sense that the hydrogen bound um, in waters plays a very important role for its um, unique properties. Um, so we have to define um, how a hydrogen band is formed between two water molecules. So we choose one of the standards, which is geometric criteria of hydrogen bands. Um, it uses two variables to define a hydrogen bands. Uh, the first is the distance between the wa between two waters, and uh, the second is um, the um, corresponding angles should meet the standards. As you can see from the figure, the left hand water molecule is dilating one of its um, hydrogen H two to the right hand water molecules. So we call that the left water molecule is the donor and the right water molecule is the acceptor of this formed hydrogen bound. In other words, we see the direction of the formed hydrogen bound is from the left water molecule to right water molecule. As we have the geometric standard for hydrogen bounds, it is easy for us to know the donor and acceptor relationship between two water molecules I and J. So we define the variable H tilde to indicate the relationship. If 
H tilde I J T is zero, which means that the two water molecules I and J uh, are not edge bounded. Otherwise, if this value is one, which means that um, it is uh, hydrogen bounded and I is the donor. Mm, if this value is minus one, uh, which says that uh, the hydrogen bound is uh, formed between the two water molecules. However, um, and in this case, I is the acceptor and J is the donor. In this work, we use graph to represent the connectivity of the hydrogen bound networks for the simulated bulk water system. And see from the figure, it is possible for us to tell different dynamic processes in liquid water by just alanonizing the sequences of H tilde for any given pair of waters. The figure illustrates three different dynamic processes for one typical water pair in 60 picoseconds. In the first interval, uh, we notice that the directed hydrogen bound H tilde is changed from uh, 1 to minus 1, uh, which indicates that the donor acceptor role has changed. So we call this process um, the exchange process. In the second interval, we we'll notice that as the increase of the distance between two water molecules, um, the hydrogen, the formed hydrogen band breaks. So we call this process um, diffusion or breakage process. And in a third interval, we notice that the donor acceptor relationship does not change because um, the H tilde value is keeps from minus one, minus one for the most of time. Uh, and we can tell what is really happens from the angle from the angle charts. It is it sees that uh, the the donor water is deleting its another hydrogen to the acceptor. As the exchange process and has drew a lot of attention on the uh, water dimers bounded on mental surface or some small water clusters. However, we still don't know is there a large number of the exchange process exist in liquid water? To answer the question, we designed an RNN-based model to classify different dynamic processes in the liquid water and uh, uh, determine the proportion of the exchange process. This figure illustrates the precision flow of our RNN-based classifier. T1 to T8 indicates different types of sequences. And T5 to T8 is this type of sequences we really care about. In the pre-procedure, we filled out, we filter out the formation sequences and the low change sequences. Uh, for conveniences, uh, we call diffusion process and the exchange process as positive sequences and all other sequences called negative sequences. As we want to find out all the positive sequences in a large number of negative sequences. So what we think is teach machine to recognize positive sequences. So we um, build a LSTM autoencoder and train the autoencoder um, just using positive sequences. So as we know, the autoencoder is just uh, tries his best to, rest to restore the input sequences. So as we train with positive sequences, and after trains, the autoencoder um, are more likely to restore the 
positive sequences will, so that um, the reconstruction error of the positive sequences um, are likely to be very small, uh, while we feed in the negative sequences to the an autoencoder, the reconstruction error are um, likely to be very large as the, as the um, negative sequence has never been trained by the autoencoder. So by choosing a reasonable reconstruction error threshold, we can determine whether a given sequence is positive or negative. As for the positive sequences, we use a final classifier to tell its diffusion sequences or the exchange sequences. And the mechanism behind the final classifier is intuitive. The range of a sequence is defined as the maximum value minus the minimum value. So then we can see that the range of the exchange sequences is much larger than diffusion sequences. As we can see from the figure A, the densities of reconstruction error for the exchange, diffusion, and the negative sequences. The autoencoder can reconstruct the positive sequences well. So the reconstruction error for the exchange and the diffusion sequences are relatively small. Besides, since negative sequences are a lot used to train the autoencoder, so it is much more difficult for the autoencoder to re reconstructing them. So then we can use uh, a threshold, LT, um, to determine whether a given sequence is positive or negative, roughly. And uh, the figure B shows that the densities of range for the exchange and diffusion sequences. We can see that the two densities are significantly different from each other, so we can tell um, the two very easily. As we get a classifier for different dynamic processes in liquid water. So then we can use this classifier to find out all the, the exchange and diffusion processes in liquid water for different temperatures. Uh, therefore, we can determine the proportion of the exchange. As we can see from the figure, the relative ratio of the exchange to diffusion process basically does not depend on the temperature. And this relative ratio is approximately 1 to 4. Um, in conclusion, we observe the de-exchange process in bulk water by keeping our eye on water molecules pair. And we find uh, the relative ratio of the exchange and the diffusion processes is approximately 1 to 4. And this ratio hardly depends on temperature, in the case the universality of the de-exchange processes in water. And we use the dynamic graph in a newly defined directed hydrogen band population, H tilde, in this book, to model the water molecules. And this reasonable description of the hydrogen band network uh, simplify the anatomies of hydrogen band dynamics dramatically. We can just use this hydrogen um, directed hydrogen band population to anatomize different dynamic processes. Uh, besides, in this work, we use RNN-based methods to classify different types of sequences, indicating that the greater potential to use deep learning uh, methods to understand more complex dynamic properties in water. And this work has been published as the cover article of CPHC. In the end, I would like to express my gratitude to my supervisor, my co-worker, my teachers, my family, and office mates. And also, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And I'm very happy to hear from you.